The volatile oil trade has some worried we are headed for a repeat of last year when oil swooned and brought the broader market with it. Our next guest says not so fast. David Bonson is founder and CEO of the Bonson Group, and he joins us now. Nice to have you back. Good to be here. So you actually think that the move down in oil is a testament to American economic strength and not a sign of some pending weakness? Why is that? Well, for one thing, what we saw a year and a half ago that you referenced was the oil price swoon, and you saw capital markets go in disarray. The high-yield bond market spreads blew out. Okay, there, was so many, there were so many fears around bank defaults. The cost of borrowing blew out. The capital markets responded so strongly the private equity came in there was just creative financing and at the same time the explorers and producers were able to lower their costs their break even level came down so much so now you see oil drop from 52 to 42 in one month a 20% mm -hmm. drop yeah high yield bonds we're talking about bear, bear market territory it's it's a bear market by definition 20% and yet none of those other factors responded the way they did a year and a half ago High yield bond spreads widened a tiny bit, but instead of 8%, they widened by 20 basis points. I just think it's a testimony to the fact that capital markets are so much stronger. Uh, that capital markets are stronger and also that they're able to get all of this out of the ground at a much cheaper uh, 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 yeah, price point, right. as you're noting. But you still have to go sell it someplace, and everybody's getting this lower price around the world. I mean, how much lower can it go because we're talking about testing 40 if we went to 35 would you have the same instinct um i would i would actually at that point be far more convicted on it and as you know we're now at back up around 45 ish mm -hmm. today so it already started about a four or five percent reversal just in the last 24 hours but let's just say to use your hypothetical we came down into the 30s for it to sustain that level that weakness it would have to be on the demand side there would have to be so much weakening demand uh, that other than that it would be a trading anomaly that would mean it was a very attractive price okay. but ultimately i always am confused why a lower price that so many people have to buy is a bad thing for the overall economy fundamentally as long as the producers are still able to make money in which case the whole supply demand you know trade-off would change it's a better thing for consumers and mm -hmm. things of that nature. Right. It used to be that it would be putting money in consumers' pockets and that they would spend it other places, but we haven't really seen that panning out no, and, and in I, consumer spending. But what are your, given your theory, mm -hmm. uh, what are your top picks in the space? What do you like? Well, I would think that the safest top pick would just be in the integrated oil companies like a Chevron or ExxonMobil. We're a little bit more uh, favorable to Chevron because of the higher dividend yield. But Exxon is clearly a very stable name there. But those are a little more boring safe picks. Mm -hmm. If one wants to go into the E&P space, explorers, producers, we like Occidental Petroleum. Okay. We think that it is on the verge of getting cheap enough to be very, very viable. Um, but the play we like, whether oil is at 65 or to your, use your 35 mm -hmm. number, are the midstream companies, the pipelines. And so we think enterprise products, uh, and certainly Enbridge Energy, some of these right now are going to benefit from greater volumes and have a greater distributable cash flow. And even on a day like today, I mean, we did see crude up a little bit, but oil services uh, up over 1% of, right. of selling off of the rest of the market, basically, except for financials. Uh, just We're heading into a long weekend, and I'm just curious, mm -hmm. you have uh, managed over a billion dollars. When you're heading into the, a holiday week, something looking like it's going to be low volume, how do you set up for that? Um, well, we don't. We, we don't believe that uh, we can help our clients by positioning any differently on a Friday where a lot of people are going to be relaxing, worried about what's going to happen on a Monday, Tuesday. It's not really our approach. Fundamentally, though, I do think right now is a good time for general positioning. It's not related to holiday weekend. It's related to just where valuations are. Bond yields very low. We think that they're likely very close to a bottom, that the reflation story is probably still alive. So we want to just be very disciplined about asset allocation, add the positions of weakness. You mentioned today, financials mm -hmm. and energy up. Not just up, up nicely in a day where the Dow was down almost 200 points. Yeah, yeah imagine if they hadn't been up, well, what right. the Dow would have looked like uh, and, without and, a And imagine what city. financials and energy would have been up today mm -hmm. if the Dow had not been down 200 points. So you have two sides to that coin. All right, David Bonson, always good to talk to you. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us. Uh, Nike.